हेलो रिंकी हेलो हाँ या मिस आर यू वर्किंग विद द यूट्यूब सेटिंग्स यस एक्चुअली इट्स ऑलरेडी थैंक यू सो मच तो यू जस्ट वेदर देयर शुड नॉट बी एनी कनेक्टिविटी ओके ओके शिव शिव ओके थैंक ओके आई विल स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग द स्लाइड ओके एक्चुअली स्पीकर इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू जॉइन अराउंड थ्री ट्वेंटी फाइव आई हैव रिक्वेस्टेड हिम टू जॉइन एट थ्री ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड विल एट थ्री ट्वेंटी फाइव और थ्री ट्वेंटी सिक्स और नॉट बिकॉज आई हैव रिक्वेस्टेड हिम एज वेल तो इफ ही जॉइन्स देन ही विल इंट्रोड्यूस द स्पीकर अदरवाइज वील हैव टू कैरी ऑन ओके बिकॉज एक्चुअली ही इज हैविंग अनदर टॉक ही इज डिलीवरिंग अनदर टॉक इन अनदर मीटिंग ओके फाइन
वेलकम सर हेलो सर हेलो डॉक्टर लीलाधर मालिक सर थैंक यू वेलकम थैंक यू थैंक यू सो आई विल बी हियर अराउंड नो प्रॉब्लम यस सर एब्सोल्युटली फाइन नो नो इशू सर एब्सोल्युटली फाइन ओके ओके थैंक यू Good afternoon, all of you. On behalf of IEEE MTTS Student Branch Chapter, I would like to welcome you all to the webinar entitled "Mimo Antennas and Beamforming Techniques" to be delivered by Dr. Lila Dar Malabhya. So please be with us. We'll be starting the talk sharp at 3:30. And uh, uh, now here is only 21 participants. However, whenever we cross 90 participants. Uh, i would be requesting other participants if you have any contacts to them then please request them to join through the youtube link uh, where we'll be uh, trying to stream the live event thank you so much
we are for five triple E MPTS student run chapter Jabalpur University. I would like to welcome you all to the event uh, entitled MIMO antennas and beam forming techniques to be delivered by Dr. Lilada Malapya around 3:30. Please be with us. Thank you so much. On behalf of IEEE MPTS student branch chapter, I would like to welcome you all to the event entitled MIMO Antennas and Beam Forming Techniques to be delivered by Dr. Liladhar Malabhya. Please be with us. We'll be starting the event with her. Thank you. Uh, dear uh, Adendu, kindly uh, yes, close, your, close your slide so that I can uh, present now. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome, sir. Welcome. It's 3.25, so we'll be starting the event within five minutes. Please be with you. So I hope that uh, uh, you are able to watch the slide uh, completely and my voice is clear before you. Yes, is it clear sir. Now? 
it's visible and uh, uh, we can hear you. So, shall I go in uh, full screen mode or is it uh, sufficient? Sir, actually, it's better if you go in full screen mode because uh, if there are participants in YouTube, then uh, might be there uh, there can be some issue. So uh, if you make full screen, that would be better. Okay, so I request to you, uh, uh, you are Suman or Ardendu? Uh, sir, this is Ardendu. Oh, Ardendu. So please uh, 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 check the full screen mode because uh, if I go in a full screen mode, so I'll not be able to watch anybody, right? Uh, and you have to give the feedback whether those slides are coming 100% on the screen or cutting uh, from some sides, right? Okay, sir. Do make it full screen. I will check it and uh, yeah, I will give please. you feedback. Please. So, uh, you have to give the feedback and I am go uh, going in a full screen mode, right? Okay, sir. Right, right. So, now please provide me the feedback. Uh, uh, these slides are moving or not? Yeah, slides are changing. Yeah. Dedicated okay. to late Anurag. Yeah. And what yeah, it's a right. And the voice is absolutely fine, sir. Okay, thank you. And uh, and to know about that, uh, uh, what is the status of the uh, live stream streaming? Uh, live streaming. Okay, sir. I'm just checking it. Uh, hello, Rinki. Are you here? Yes. 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 Uh, uh, so the YouTube live is working fine. fine. Yeah, it's fine. It has some delay, so it's uh, it has not started uh, up to uh, source slide. It's actually three minutes delayed, so I can check it like after two three minutes whether source uh, slide is properly coming or not. In my screen, it's okay, but the live broadcast YouTube slides, I can tell you only just after two minutes. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Uh, Rinki, please uh, mute your mic. Yeah. So, sir, actually there are uh, one or two minutes delay while we are streaming it uh, on YouTube. So yeah, that, uh, is, that is the normal procedure. That is a normal procedure in live streaming. So there is no problem. Actually, uh, many times we delivered these other things and found the same um, uh, that uh, there is a slight delay here. Yeah, right, sir. Right. So no problem. Shall we start uh, because three minutes are remaining with us? Uh, okay, sir. Actually, at 3.30, pro uh, probably Professor Bhaskar Gupta is in another meeting. So, at 3.30, I will be introducing you with a short uh, bio data and then I will request you to start your uh, talk. Okay. So, till uh, I am coming out of the full screen mode, right? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Not an issue. Yeah. Hello, Professor Bhaskar Gupta. Hello, sir. Sir, I can see you that uh, you have already joined the meeting, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, Shumon, are you here? Hello, Shumon. Hello. Uh, can you make a call to Professor Vashur Gupta? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, we can hear you, but it's coming very low. Hello, Dr. Liladhar Malibya, sir. Actually, we are trying to connect Professor uh, Bhaskar Gupta, sir. If he can join within a minute, then uh, we'll uh, take his uh, note uh, during the introduction. Otherwise, we'll be starting uh, directly. So, sir, please wait for okay. one minute. Yeah, okay, no problem. No problem.
I am here, Lord Dindu. हेलो प्रफेसर भास्कर गुप्ता who is the advisor of IEEE MTTS student branch chapter Jadavpur University he has already joined our meeting so i request professor bhaskar gupta to introduce the speaker sir please thank you ardendu and uh, it's also my pleasure to introduce today's program since uh, the students branch chapter is taking up so many programs and already got some special grant from mtt society I believe today's program also formative one, which will benefit everybody present. Uh, to introduce the speaker, Dr. Lila Dar Malaviya, he is an associate uh, professor in the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, Institute of Technology and Science, Indore, which is affiliated to RGPV Bhopal. He did. is ame in electronics and telecommunication engineering from sgs its in the after that he completed his phd in rf and micro specialization from iit roorkee in 2017 he has published 25 papers in reputed journals and international and national conferences he has a national patent to his credit dr malviya also serves as a reviewer for reputed journals like iit map rfmw cad and peer etc his primary research covers mimo antennas for various applications such as 5g wireless communications with that i would request uh, dr malviya to start presenting his talk uh thank you so much sir for your uh, nice presentation uh so uh, welcome everyone uh, without wasting any time uh, let us start okay before uh, entering into uh, the presentation mode i request to everyone so kindly uh, mute your mics uh, your videos also and uh, uh, kindly don't present anything because uh, the presentation can be done from my side so please don't uh, uh, uh choose the option of the presenting right so thank you so we are uh, just starting within the 2 minute so adendu shall we start now yes sir definitely okay so kindly uh, check my slides are moving because uh, i will go in a full screen mode now uh, yeah and i request to you that whenever you find any trouble so kindly let me know about date one so that we can solve from definitely sir i will let you know Okay, so I am entering into full screen mode, and uh, okay, it's completely visible. I, I think there is no cutting from the sides. In full screen mode, yeah. Okay, and the voice is also clear. Ah, uh, yeah, it's clear, sir. Welcome, everyone. I am Dr. Lila Ramalvia, Associate Professor in SGSIT Indore. so before uh, entering in the presentation uh, i have to say something about uh, our work that we are doing in sgs it is in door uh, we are working on the 4g 5g and the terahertz and uh, we are also planning for for the massive mimo antenna designs uh, we have done certain uh, uh, beam forming antenna designs with the arrays and the mimo so the today's session uh, is based on the introduction of the mimo antennas and the beam forming techniques what are the components of uh, uh, the beam forming and how the mimo uh, can be uh, the part of the beam forming right so uh, let us uh, uh, look at uh, this picture this is my friend uh, uh, mr anurag shrivastava who uh, died in a cancer uh, last year so this uh, full presentation is dedicated to my friend mr anurag shrivastava and uh, 
Uh, okay, so uh, Anuragin, uh, I was, uh, I uh, were working together in the SGS sites in Door from so many years, but unfortunately, uh, he became the patient of uh, this one and he was unaware about those problems. So I request to everyone be physically fit, healthy, uh, go through the routine checkups, right, so that the problem can be solved within the time limit. So thank you. So now let us start with the introduction. Okay, so everybody knows about the multipath propagation and I need to know about the multipath propagation. That what is the multipath propagation? So if you look at the scenario, a wave transmitted from the uh, user and at the reception end, that can be received with the different paths, right? So this is the case of the wireless communication that how we get the signal transmitted by the transmitter and received by the receiver. So there may be the multiple paths. Out of those are the multiple paths. We can find that a direct communication between the uh, base station and the receiver at the transmitter and the receiver can be done with the help of the line of sight communication. But this is not possible every time. And that's why we may think about the uh, uh, reception of the signal from the different paths, like the reflection, like the diffraction, like the scattering, so there may be different uh, objects, different obstacles which are responsible for the reflection, diffraction and the scattering. And finally, uh, the receiver is able to uh, get a signal, right? So these are the four possible paths have the different, different delays, right? And what is the ultimate uh, aim of us that the signal must be received without the delay, signal must be received without uh, the loss in the power, signal must be received with the high signal to noise ratio, signal must be received with the lowest interference, right? And that's why uh, every time we try to uh, design so many types of antennas for such purposes, right? So MIMO is one of the techniques as well as different waveforming techniques are also used for uh, the direct communication between the transmitter and the receiver. Now, let us look at uh, the different types of antennas uh, uh, we uh, studied earlier. So, we have the single input, single output antenna. And a single output, single output antenna works in line of sight communication, but this is not the practical scenario every time. If we look at the communication between the satellite and the dish antenna, so that uh, works on the single link, right? But that is uh, not possible every time. And uh, what we have to uh, think about the uh, other solutions, they, uh, let us uh, use multiple antennas instead of a single antenna, right? So in that case, what we can do here, that if the transmitter is connected to the multiple antennas and the receiver is connected to the multiple antennas, so loss of signaling can be avoided, real, reliability can be improved, as well as the signal to noise ratio can be improved, as well as the capacity can be improved, as well as the interference can be reduced. So uh, these all the things are possible with the MIMO antennas and uh, definitely the reliable communication can be done, right? Okay, so uh, we have these two techniques. We are using these two techniques uh, from so many years. CISO is the old technique, right? MIMO uh, is the future of all the generation communications. So these are two shown here, uh, used for the wireless communication. Now I to uh, show here that uh, uh, what are the differences uh, between the CISO, single input, single output, and the uh, multiple input, multiple output uh, uh, antennas. Uh, that if you look at uh, the CISO, so uh, CISO has a low data rate, right? And uh, if you look at the 4G, 4 generation uh, that we are using the LT here, G uh, was assumed to provide a solution up to the 1 giga, uh, uh, 1 GB, 1 gigabyte, right? But what was the problem with the 4G that for the 1 Gbps data rate, 1 Gbps data rate, gigabits per second data rate, the requirement with in case of the CISO was 250 megahertz, right? This spectrum is very much costlier because if you want to uh, use the 250 megahertz of the spectrum, definitely we have to pay the uh, very high amount of the money and uh, the same thing, one GPPS of the data rate can be obtained with a MIMO uh, with the 20 megahertz of the bandwidth. So uh, there is a spectrum saving, more than 10 times of the spectrum saving for the MIMO. And that's why MIMO is considered to provide uh, the better solutions uh, 
uh, with the lowest bandwidth, lowest spectrum, at the lowest cost, right? Now, if you look at the single input, single output, so this works on the serial communication. And the reason is that only single antenna at the transmitter is used, single antenna at the receiver is used, and the MIMO uh, is used uh, for parallel communication. Multiple stream can be transmitted using the spectral multiplexing, as well as the diversity technique can be used. So uh, for the reliability, for the high gain, parallel communication is uh, uh, very much uh, uh, required. Right. Similarly, uh, in case of the parallel communication, the delays can be reduced, latency can be reduced to a, a very uh, significant value. Similarly, if we go through the data rate, so CISO has the data rates, variation in the data rate with respect to the variation in the bandwidth. So if we consider uh, 40 megahertz of the bandwidth, maximum data rate of 200 Mbps can be obtained. Uh, with the CISO, but if you increase the bandwidth by 40 megahertz in the CISO, so maximum data rate of the 433 Mbps can be obtained. If you look at the data rate provided by the MIMO, so for the 2 cross 2 MIMO for the 40 megahertz of the bandwidth, we can find the 400 Mbps of the uh, data rate. So if you increase the bandwidth in case of the 2 cross 2 MIMO, we can find 866 Mbps. And if you look at the figures of the data rates of uh, of CISO and the MIMO. So we are getting here that uh, the MIMO is able to provide the double of the uh, data rate of the CISO antennas, single input, single output antennas. Similarly, if you look at the capacity here, so the capacity uh, formulas can be uh, derived on the basis of the Shannon, uh, Shannon's capacity theorem. So with the help of the Shannon capacity theorem, we can find the capacity of the CISO denoted by the B B is a bandwidth log to 1 plus signal to noise ratio. So in case of the uh, CISO, the capacity increases exponentially, right? And in case of the MIMO, capacity increases linearly. So, uh, sorry, uh, in case of the CISO, capacity increases logarithmically. And in case of the MIMO, capacity increases linearly. But at a cost of the, uh, uh, in case of the CISO, uh, the capacity increases at the cost of the power because if the power is 10 dB, so in that case, uh, uh, 3.46 bits per second per hour, 10 times of the previous value means the 100, right? So in case, the capacity will become 6.65 bits per second per hour. If the power is uh, 1000, so uh, 1000 dB, so in case of the capacity of the CISO will become 9.96 bits per second per hour. Right, the measure investment uh, uh, in case of the CISO is the power. So there is a large vestige of the uh, power in case of the CISO, right? So that term is not required here. And uh, uh, the capacity of the uh, MIMO can be increased with the multiple streams. So if you look at the N stream, so number of antennas uh, at the transmitter and the receiver decide the uh, uh, streams and the capacity is dependent on the streams provided by the MIMO. Right, so if you have two cross two case, so four streams are here. If you have four cross four case in MIMO, so you have 16 uh, streams, right? So depending on these, the for formula of Shannon's capacity theorem can be modified. And this way, the capacity of the MIMO can be written as the number of the streams multiplied by the capacity of the CISO, right? So similarly, signal to noise ratio, uh, uh, is limited in case of the CISO because that is uh, used for the line of sight communication. So that's why uh, we have a single path and in that case the signal to noise ratio is limited. But the MIMO has uh, the average signal to noise ratio and that is uh, uh, dependent on the uh, product of the average SNR multiplied by the number of streams. Right. So again it is assumed that uh, the MIMO provides the solution of the SNR or high SNR can be obtained and there is a linear spread with the number of uh, uh, streams of the MIMO. Similarly, the signal when included with interference, so there is a limited response in case of the CISO, but MIMO, uh, the co-channel interface can be reduced and uh, due to the spectral signature of antennas. Similarly, one of the major factors in case of the uh, antenna designs is spectral efficiency. So spectral efficiency in case of the CISO is limited 6 bits per second per hertz. 
But in case of the MIMO antennas, this is increases with the number of antennas. So 10 cross 10 combination of the MIMO has 50 bits per second per hertz, right? So this is one of the factor, and that's why uh, we can. Uh, I mean, uh, assume a uh, considered it on the basis of this comparison that the MIMO provides much better than uh, much better solutions of the wireless antennas, right? Now, uh, let's come to the uh, another term. How we can extend uh, the data rate of the MIMO antennas? So we have different modulation techniques like the BPSK uh, QAM with the sixteen. Uh, uh, Constellations are 16 uh, symbols, are 64 symbols, are 256 symbols, are 1024 symbols. And if we look at uh, uh, the use of these uh, on the modulation techniques, because uh, we are considering these in analog and the digital modulations, right? So MIMO can extend its capability when we use a particular type of the modulation technique. There is no end of these modulation techniques because so many types of the modulation techniques are available in the practice. And depending on those, the data rates can be enhanced. So if you look at uh, this one cross one with different modulation techniques, we have 32 megabits per second or 65 megabits per second or 97 megabits per second. And if we go through uh, these are the combination. Uh, so we find that uh, still the CISO means one cross one is unable to provide a very, very high value of the data rates, right? But if you look at two cross two, three cross three, in any column 4, 4 or 8 cross is we find that yes 2.6 gigahertz or 4.3 gigahertz can be obtained uh, easily with these modulation techniques but please remember that saturation is one of the important term that is dependent on so many factors so that's why uh, uh, theoretically this possible that the 4.3 giga uh, bits per second can be obtained here but practically there are so many limitations and uh, we have to choose the proper uh, combination of the modulation techniques and proper combination of the MIMO antennas. Now, come to the uh, different types of technologies here because uh, as our presentation is based on the MIMO antennas and the beamforming techniques, right? So, I need to cover certain uh, things uh, uh, about 4G here, that 4G long-term evolution promised many features like serving 1 million bass stations for the indoor and outdoor application. Still, it failed to satisfy the exponentially increasing demands of mobile and wireless users. So, uh, the solution is given by the 5G technology. 5G is built on uh, IEEE 802.11 protocol. So, IEEE 802.11 is the WLAN, right? IEEE 802.11 is WLAN, wireless local area network. And 5G was built on this one. And what was the M behind it? to speed up its data rate three times that of the 4G. The mobile devices used with 4G can be modified to accommodate 5G antennas. Similarly, the fifth generation is the current hot topic of the world's leading telecommunication companies. The compact designs of antennas made it possible for them to resonate at higher frequencies. Right, so uh, we can find the different bands of the 5G. I will show here the different band of the 5G. Now, data rate of the 5G technology for low mobility users is expected to be 50 Gbps. So this figure is very, very big. But what is the M behind this 50 Gbps? That the latency can be uh, reduced to a negligible value, right? So if a person is traveling in a car or in a plane, so he's not mobile, but the vehicle is mobile. So in that case, the high speed is provided here, so 50 Gbps is expected for such type of low mobility users and 5 Gbps for pedestrian or the low mobility users are uh, 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 can easily access uh, the data. Okay, now there are certain uh, pros and the cons uh, uh, associated with different technologies. So, MM waves are found to be prone to external factors and cannot penetrate through the obstacles easily. Right, so 1 to 10 uh, mm uh, of the wave lengths uh, uh, are here and travel in a line of sight communication. So there is a problem here and have very less diffraction. As a result, are not able to penetrate through obstacles. So there is a problem here uh, that there are trees, buildings, obstacles in case of the raining season. Uh, the rain is also one of the obstacles for such things. 
okay uh, the 5g uh, uh, is used to provide a solution of uh, the different types of mimos and uh, massive mimo is uh, one uh, of the solution for the uh, uh, high uh, exponential growth of the uh, users mobile users now in order to overcome the multipath scattering multiple antennas at both the transmitter and the receivers are considered similarly the array antennas and the phase array antennas uh, are used commercially to provide the solution uh, of uh, the radiation in a particular direction or focus the radiation in a particular direction or in a desired direction now let's come to the uh, arrays first okay uh, why the arrays are important because the beam forming uh, is dependent on the arrays and the mimo right so i'll show uh, different uh, uh, fabricated uh, antennas uh, as well as the different things uh, which are uh, working together uh, with the arrays and the mimo are uh, simply based on the array so array is nothing that is a group of the antennas there may be the similar or dissimilar uh, uh, elements can be connected to a single port Are can be connected to the multiple ports. Can be connected in the series fed structure. Can be connected in the series and the parallel uh, fed structure. So there are so many uh, combinations can be seen in the literature uh, that how the arrays can be connected. So what is the ultimate aim of the arrays? The ultimate aim of the arrays is to provide the directivity, to concentrate the radiation in a particular direction. That means to enhance the gain in a particular direction, and uh, and to provide the better signal to noise ratio of the antenna so that means the arrays are used to shape the radiation pattern definitely uh, this uh, uh, shaping of the radiation pattern is required in case of the uh, beam forming similarly uh, the arrays are useful to reduce the interference in the back direction or in the uh, side uh, different sides right that means uh, uh, back lobes and the side lobes should be very very small when the beam is directed in a particular direction are used to cover a particular direction so uh, uh, interference should be uh, less and uh, the side lobes should be less or back lobe uh, should be less similarly uh, the arrays can be used to provide the uh, uh, string of the beam so beam string is uh, one of the technique associated with the beam forming so beams are stirred Uh, means uh, beams can be moved to cover a particular direction if required similarly the signal to uh, interference plus noise ratio can be maximized mean the interference because of certain obstacle can be reduced with the help of the arrays and uh, if you look at uh, the solution uh, and the applications of these arrays so broadcasting beam forming naval uh, uses optical phase arrays radio frequency identification weather uh, Uh, research uses missile guidance and fire radar aircraft are using this arrays there are so many things uh, other things are associated with the antenna arrays so active array would be closer to mimo now the word has come here that why the mimos are required here so active array would be closer to mimo with an ability to control the phase and amplitude similarly the passive array would you single radio but use phase shifting and attenuators to achieve beam string of antenna okay linear uh, pitch array is used to enhance the beam weight field produced by an antenna array similar is a vector sum of the fields produced by the individual antennas of the array i'll show the formula here that how uh, the total field can become the sum of the fields uh, produced by the different uh, fields okay transmit and receive radio waves for a greater signal quality so better signal quality can be obtained with the antenna arrays the examples uh, can be taken in terms of the uh, micro chip patch antenna arrays with four patches uh, so micro chip patch antenna array with four patches antenna produces 10 db of the gain while the single patch provides a 6 db of the gain only okay this must be the dbi so dbi of the gain So now look at the equation uh, that uh, the total field is dependent on the field produced by the individual antennas. This is the case of the uh, two antennas. So uh, E one is the field produced by the first antenna. E two is the electric field produced by the second antenna. So the total field is sum of these two antennas, and that's why this is very much important uh, that the total field uh, will be uh, 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 the better 
uh, result in case of the 5G array antennas. Okay, the array factor is one of the uh, uh, mean uh, uh, quality factor uh, that is used to uh, change the shape of the uh, array antennas. Now, if we go through the different speeds provided by the different generations, so we find that the first generation was able to uh, provide the analog wise up to the 2.4 kilobits per second. Second generation accommodated the telephone as well as uh, the messaging uh, and uh, uh, the voice, uh, digital voice and the simple data communication up to the 64 kbps. Similarly, third generation uh, uh, showed uh, much enhanced uh, uh, capabilities in comparison to the 2G. So, uh, music, movie, then uh, different things were associated with the uh, uh, third generation. So, uh, 2000 kilobits per second of the data rate was obtained with 3G. But if you go through the 4G LTE, 4G Pro, and 4G 8, 4G 10, so we can find here that the 1 Gbps of the data is able to cover most of the services like uh, driving the car or uh, 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 watching the contents live streaming here. Uh, and, and these all the things can be possible with the 4G. So, what is the need of the 5G here? The question is that uh, if we go through uh, the different uh, uh, limitation of the 4G, so one of the limitation of the 4G is that uh, when you are in the best main and uh, you are, uh, uh, say, of, of five buildings uh, in a five, uh, fifth floor uh, after the ground, right, in a lower side, so the signals are unable to reach there. Similarly, if uh, you look at the hospitals and a live operation is going on, so 4G is unable to uh, provide a solution here because the delays are high. So in such cases, uh, we always require the continuous signaling without the delay or negligible delay. And the 5G is one of the solutions. That's why uh, more than 1 Gbps of the data rate can be obtained for the 5G. So 5G is considered as a solution of the real world applications. So, look at the real-world application that uh, where there is a, a need of the low latencies or the negligible latencies and a very high speed. Yes, so we have this overall view of the 5G here that we are working with the self-driving cars. Without the driver, the cars can be run and uh, definitely uh, uh, without the delay, uh, they must reach the destination, they must control uh, uh, the different obstacles of the uh, source and the destination, so self-driving cars uh, are one of the examples. Similarly, the smart cross can be used. Those are used to provide the different symptoms of our body. And similarly, the smart watches are here to provide the very, very fraction of the time. Similarly, the 4G industry is automated industry as requiring the 5G. Similarly, we have the toll collection systems, traffic strain and the management. So there is no end here. And if you look at the virtual uh, reality, so virtual reality gaming uh, is also requiring that one. So many movies are available uh, on the internet if you watch them. So the, uh, those are uh, using the virtual reality of the applications and uh, providing the real time applications. So. Uh, these all are the applications uh, shown here which are uh, requiring the 5G application and uh, definitely uh, uh, these applications are covering the real-time applications, real-time mobility. So in such cases we cannot uh, think about the delays because uh, if the delay is here so everything can be uh, turned back, right? So that's why uh, uh, 5G is uh, very much helpful in the real-time applications. Okay, so 5G is a project of the uh, 5G triple P, right? So, uh, if you look at the project of the uh, 4G that was based on the third generation partnership project, and uh, if you look at uh, the different solutions provided uh, for the 5G, so these are based on the 3GPP as well as the ITU, International Telecommunication Union, and uh, jointly they are used to provide a solution of the smart cities, smart buildings, smart homes, Right, so these will be covered, are uh, are coming in the market uh, in terms of the 5G. 
Okay, if you look at uh, certain uh, standards set by the International Telecommunication Union, so peak data rates are the 20 Gbps uh, for the downlink and 10 uh, Gbps for the uplink are shown here. Spectral efficiencies of uh, 15 to 30 bits per second per hertz. Uh, latency of uh, 1 to 4 uh, milliseconds for user and uh, 10 to 20 milliseconds for the control plane are shown by the uh, ITU. Maximum bandwidth of the 1 giga uh, uh, hertz to 6 gigahertz uh, with the frequency bands can be seen uh, with the 5G. Uh, and if you look at the 4G, so uh, the bandwidth was limited uh, and it was scalable up to the 20 megahertz. So if you look at uh, the bandwidth provided by the 5G uh, is uh, 1 gigahertz and uh, in different bands, uh, the bands of, uh, uh, there are two bands here in uh, 5G, one is the FR1 and other is the FR2. So FR1 is used to cover the frequencies under the 6 gigahertz, FR2 is used to cover the frequencies about uh, 20 gigahertz. So there are uh, different bands are given here and the maximum bandwidth we can uh, think about uh, uh, the 1 gigahertz, about 6 gigahertz frequency band in the 5G. So minimum system bandwidth is at least 100 megahertz. So if you compare the bandwidth, maximum bandwidth of the uh, 4G LTE, that was 20 megahertz and that was a scalable 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz. In certain bands, there was a 100 megahertz of the bandwidth in the 4G, right? But here, the 100 megahertz of the bandwidth is the 5G is the minimum. Okay, the mobility up to 500 kilometer per hour in the rural areas. So that is one of the biggest uh, achievement in case of the 5G. Network reliability is 99.999%. So that is one of the important aspect of the of 5G. Energy efficiency so consumes a 10 percent of the uh, current uh, power so there is not uh, no uh, big loss here if you look at the different countries so so many countries are in the race to provide the 5g solution so presently uh, we have south korea china united states and different operators at&t kt corporation china mobile uh, these are building uh, uh, the devices for the world uh, you can also find uh, the different mobiles on the internet, Samsung Galaxy, One Pro 8, uh, then Motorola Edge Plus, LG V60, thank you. So these are available in the market, are coming to the market. Now, uh, let's come to the antennas. So uh, before uh, entering into the MIMO antennas, uh, I want to ask to uh, Adendu, is everything is fine? Uh, yes, sir. Everything is fine. Okay. So, my speed is not uh, very fast? Uh, no, sir. It's absolutely fine. No, sir. And I request all the participants. Uh, if you have any question, then you can uh, post in the chat box. Okay. Thank you. So, shall we continue now? Yes, yes sir. sir. So, okay. So, now let's come to the MIMO antennas. So, uh, certain antennas I have designed here. Okay, some uh, antennas uh, were from uh, my PhD, some I have designed with my students. So, uh, if you look at this uh, figure here, uh, I think everybody is able to watch this figure having a one cross two, uh, one cross two arrangement here, one cross two arrangement here. There are two ports I use here for the 4G application. This antenna was uh, designed for the uh, circularly polarization, circular polarization, and that was working with a 5.8 gigahertz, right? So if you look at this figure, what I've done in this figure here, that I used uh, different types of the uh, feed arrangements. And this feed arrangements are shown here, 50 ohm uh, of the feed is used here to connect to the port, 100 ohm of the feed is used here uh, that is connected uh, from the center of the 50 ohm uh, uh, feed and similarly we have the 45 uh, sorry uh, lambda by 4 uh, size of the feeds here are 70.7 uh, 70.7 ohms of the uh, feed are used here so I have used uh, the uh, feed structure here 1 plus 2 of the feed structure here and that uses the 50 ohm 
100 ohm and 70.7 ohm that means 50 ohm line 100 ohm line and lambda by 4 line so what was the ultimate aim of this arrangement that uh, we were uh, uh, wanted to use the high value of the gain right we have used here the uh, uh, circular polarization arrangement we have used here uh, certain slots in the patches and uh, uh, these patches are according to the 50 